and welcome back to another episode of the Affiliate Podcast, joined, as always, by my faithful co-host, Tony. How are you, good sir? I'm fantastic. I'm currently sitting in the shade, but I am still in Colorado, um, up here at Casa de Chantash, so uh, if you guys can see the view that I'm looking at, your day would be as good as mine as well. <laughs> if you suddenly like look like you've tuned out and get a little distracted, then maybe the view will be you know, calming for you. We know what you're looking at. Well, probably um, I could distract because there's a mountain lion or something, but <laughs> that it, that it might bring up um, viewership. I don't know. Maybe mm-hmm. you could throw that out there. Podcast host gets mauled by a lion on live broadcast. Yeah, I I probably would edit that slightly. Maybe we'd go viral. Yeah, we would. We'd be huge. Um, so you were up there uh, for the most recent weekend just passed uh, for the Big Fish foundation fundraiser which is awesome um great weekend oh it was a fantastic weekend tasha will be on um in the next coming weeks i'm not sure when that episode will will air um kind of in recap of the whole thing but uh very cool very very um rewarding organization to be a part of and to help out with um Mm -hmm. but also just a very cool event if nothing else it just have been you know in attendance of which is very very mm-hmm. cool you know cool athletes cool veterans cool cause cool people um you really just one big party all weekend yeah you know um generally after any anytime i come visit my good friend tosh uh, my face always looks like this because it always <laughs> involves not sleeping um he's a very hazardous friend to my health but also one of the best friends that i've ever had in my entire life so <laughs> it's a, awesome it's a balance life is balanced lisa that is good, and we we like a, a balanced Tony, shall we yeah. say? Um, I'm so glad it looked great from the footage. But we're not here to talk all things big fish, as amazing as that is today. Thought we'd dig into something a little bit uh, different for us, um, and getting more into the nitty gritties because we often talk about, um, you know, what makes coaching different to mentoring, and and you know, the differences in fit affiliate. So we had a conversation a couple of weeks ago. This is it's taken a couple of weeks to percolate through my uh, upside down brain down here to frame it in a way that we won't look like you know that we're telling everybody they're weak minded. But there seems to be a human trait, and I'm not just going to label this with affiliate owners because it is a human trait where when we feel stuck, we just want answers. Mm. When in fact we could move further faster by looking internally and seeing what the behaviours are that need to change because the risk with doing that, when we turn that lens on ourselves, we can feel like failures, clearly, and we're not comfortable. And sometimes, many times, most times, the coaching journey, um, when you're working with a genuine actual coach, gets into that behavioral conversation and why do you do the things that you do rather than just give me more things to do and tell me the answer and we can move on from this. Mm. Thoughts. It's a good, uh, it's a good opener there, Lisa. Um, very lots to unpack in there doing what you do best. I see, um, blindsiding me. Hello, everybody. Um, (laughs) So I know we just kind of touched real quick on the fact that I was here for Big Fish, but this conversation is not unrelated to exactly what took place here over the weekend. Um, and that is, if I'm going to lose you here, I don't know, but um tends to be in mountain internet, so bear with yeah. me. I just got a thing that's unable to connect. Um, it is choosing the hard things, right? And um, at this point, uh, a sidebar here, I'm beginning to lose hope that I'm going to ever be able to navigate the conversation well enough to get people to truly understand what coaching is because it's just so ubiquitously used um but i swear i'm gonna just die on that sword or on that soapbox but um you know it is it is central to the fundamental and foundational difference of what is coaching both what it means to be coached as well as what it means to be a coach and and it's impossible to convey that in words in my opinion without experience um Mm. and that's kind of a sort of a sidebar precursor to the conversation because back to, you know, why people choose comfort or why people want the answers is that they're trying to choose comfort, right? Like that's all it comes down to. Like, and you said something that was important in there, but it's wrong. And that is that 
when people get stuck, they look for answers. That's not mm. true. They're looking for answers every day in their life. What they're trying to do, and I, I apologize because I'm really typecasting the entire audience here, but um, people in general be people in. Sorry. Mm. Um, humans in general are giant efficiency machines, right? And so the easiest thing to do is do the easiest thing. Mm. And that's what keeps us alive as a species and et cetera. And so we're genuinely, truly hardwired to do that. The problem is, is that that central sort of life preserving uh, focus is not a life giving endeavor, meaning it does mm. not improve the quality of your life. It just preserves the current quality of life. And if you're listening to this podcast, I'm assuming you're likely in pursuit of a better life, right? a bigger life. Mm. And maintaining or preserving your current level of comfort will never afford you that next level of life. It's just impossible. It's not, you know, the, the avoidance of discomfort has never created more comfort, mm. but the pursuit of discomfort has always afforded more comfort. Mm. It's the great irony, right? And that's, I think the central foundational rift in there. And I get it. A lot of you guys are listening to this are like, you know, you think that you're a bunch of hard motherfuckers and like you do hard things. And, and I bet that you do lots of hard things, but hard is relative and mm. you need to choose your heart. And what I mean by that is not the workout that you did and not the weight vest that you wore, not the workout that you scaled up because you really just wanted to go slower, not faster, because you really didn't want to get that uncomfortable. You just wanted to get your ego stroke there. But, you know, choosing discomfort is about legitimately being like, this is the thing I don't want to do okay, it's the thing I'm going to do, right? Mm. Or it's, it's you know, being in something and being like, I can't possibly do more and then choosing to do more, right? Mm. It's, it's the things that are not necessarily always intrinsically hardwired into us, but they're always available to us. Mm. And I think, you know, when I said that up front about when people are stuck there looking for the answers mm -hmm. is... I probably missed an important piece in that in saying that they wait until they're stuck to reach out and ask for what they think is help. Mm -hmm. So rather than, you know, like you said, choose your hard, you know, if we started out our lives, you know, eating more broccoli, drinking more water, moving regularly, we probably wouldn't need to, you know, work so hard in the gym and sacrifice so much when we're older. That's the thing. We stopped it before it became a problem. Mm. So, you know, with affiliate owners, it's usually when not only the dumpster is on fire, but everything is on a fire around them. They're going to reach out and go, I need help. Give me the pathway out. Just come and rescue me. They're looking for somebody to save them. But in the case of coaching, when the coach then puts the mirror on them, it's like, well, why are you lighting the fires? Mm. It's like, I don't next. That's not, that's not, that's not what I'm looking for here. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, in, in, to that conversation, um, the thing that they pursue to get them out of being stuck is the thing that got them stuck in the first place. And that is the pursuit of answers instead of the pursuit of action. Uh. And the reason for that is that answers abdicate responsibility. They enable complacency. They allow you and afford you the ability to do searching, researching, learning, experiencing all these things. And they avoid you taking action, which could possibly and maybe very likely lead to failure. Oh. You don't want to fail. The only the only true human motivator is the avoidance of discomfort, unfortunately, right? And what's ironic about that is that the only way to become a better human is through the intentional use of discomfort, right? Mm. And I'm not saying you go out and set your life on fire, but I'm telling you that there's things in your life that you are fully aware of that you should be doing or could be doing, but you don't have any belief in the fact that you could ever do them, so you've avoided them. And in doing so, you you not allowed yourself the opportunity to succeed or excel. Mm. Right? And um, it's kind of like today's affiliate post, which is that, you know, knowledge has ruined more opportunities than ignorance has. And mm. I think more people would read that and be like, that's impossible. These birds are wild right now. Um, they're chasing me. 
and because you know we, we all think that people who succeed are these the most intelligent the you know the most gifted the most you know hmm. you know accredited whatever you want to call it and there's probably some truth to that and that's just because in their journey they continue to acquire information and they grow and they grow and they grow they didn't sit down and be like okay let me read the whole internet and then start on tuesday but that is precisely what everybody chooses to do. And the reason you're doing that, and don't don't hate me for this, but the reason you're doing that is that it affords you the ability to not take action. Mm. You're using it as a crutch. And, and that's a hard, very insidious, and very deceptive tactic that we all use on ourselves. I do it too, right? Like mm. Lisa's guilty of it, trust me, as her coach, <laughs> he is super guilty of it. And you know, my coach, because <laughs> I have multiple nail me on it on a regular basis, right? Because I mm. am obsessed with having the right answer, right? I, mm. I always want to know. And like the fucking, my therapist, my coaches, everybody, it is a broken record. You don't need to know. Mm. And I'm like, ha, huh, you're wrong, <laughs> right? Like, But I get it. I'm driven by it. And that's why I can speak so strongly and, and so you know intensely towards it because – it is the reason why Fit Billy is built the way that it is, is because it wasn't because of my success. It was built on my failure. Like mm. I knew that my incessant need to seek information, education, validation was the, the very thing that was keeping me from taking action. Mm. Right? That what I knew was precisely in the way of knowing. Mm. And it's that that you know as you touched on there it's that abdication of responsibility and going well i did what you said and nothing happened so mm. it's your fault and i know we've talked about this in in previous calls ad nauseum about well i did the thing and then you who gave me the answers go well i gave it to you like worked for me what what you do with it, it's up to you but as <sighs> It's kind of a tricky one because, you know, we were speaking in our chat about the fact that the affiliate owner, the, the affiliate owner, the affiliate model has a very low barrier to entry. It's very simple. It lets people pursue a dream where they can feel like that they're helping others and, and don't feel like that they need to be running a business or doing a, a thing, even though, you know, they are in fact writing this amazing line, but they're not aware of that till they get immersed and then they're like, holy shit, I'm writing the line, now what do I do? Hmm. But also um, ad it almost allows them to adopt that um, victim mindset of, well, it's supposed to be hard and hmm. I don't do it for the money. Um, I do it to help people and, you know, those are all, um, you know, phrases that we hear a lot but it's, you know, it's supposed to be hard, it's not supposed to be easy hustle, grind, all that sort of stuff. And then it absolves them from that really looking within going, I don't want to feel like if I'm doing all the things and I can't feel like I'm failing, mm. Mm. which, you know, speaking as someone who, you know, as you said, is coached by your good self and you've put me on the mat more times than I care to count in the last almost three years, um, as in, well, why do you feel the need to keep doing the things so that you feel like you're achieving something when you're actually just spinning your wheels. Mm. Mm. Um, when the very thing you're trying to avoid is the thing that you create, you can guarantee the trauma is to blame. Mm. And, and I get it. Trauma is a really weird word that it has a lot of different meanings to a lot of people, but let me be very clear on the definition of trauma. It is anything that is outside your ability to cope with. Uh, you know, and that can be Murph <laughs> truly it can be a traumatic experience for people. It could be, you know, a near death experience. It could be any number of things. Right. And um, that creates a lot of different things. And essentially what it does is it allows you to take a scenario, a situation an experience and accept it as truth. And mm. because you accept it as truth, you will make all future decisions based on that truth. And I'm not going to get into the rabbit hole in the weeds on that, but that is the, 
the the central impetus, the the fault line that creates the pattern that is present mm-hmm. in almost all of us, because no human is absent of trauma, zero, none. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is it is the essence that is humanity, truly, um, or to man, humanity or, or being alive. Um, mm-hmm. So, back to that sort of conversation about like what it means to be, you know. Let's just go into a very specific part of this because most of you guys are affiliate owners who are listening to this. Is that the affiliate landscape can be split into two camps: entrepreneurs and intrapreneurs. Period. Mm. And the true, the truest statement of all true statements is that the vast majority of affiliate owners are entrepreneurs. And mm-hmm. the very nature of entrepreneurs is they are get shit doneers, right? That's just what they like to do. They are they are task obsessed. <laughs> Lisa's right. They're yeah. Catholic, um, and, you know, they, they live and die by, you know, you know, they're rating their, their effectiveness and their, their quality of life by the amount of things that they can get done, not particularly on what they're accomplishing. Hmm. And that's an important distinction. And this does not mean that entrepreneurs are worse than entrepreneurs. They're just wired differently. Um, we are particularly interested at Fitphilia and entrepreneurs more than entrepreneurs, not because there's anything wrong with them, but because entrepreneurs are in the more growth versus fixed mindset. And I hate using that stupid wording Mm. because growth versus fixed just seems like one is better than the other. And it's not, um, Mm. there's a lot of very, very, very successful fixed mindset people. And there's a lot of very successful growth and vice versa. Um, it's just the nature of how you view the world. And for oh. us, we're very interested in people who view the world through a growth mindset um, versus people who view the world through a fixed mindset. However, we're also very interested in helping people who are currently stuck in a fixed mindset accidentally, and this is a lot of people, oh. getting to a place where they can view the world through a growth mindset. Um, you know, I think a lot of people accept the identity of like growth versus fixed based on you know who they are without really any consideration that you can change who you are and become anything, right? Mm -hmm. And if that means that you have decided that, you know, your growth versus fixed mindset is holding you back, then change it. Mm -hmm. Uh, It doesn't mean that it's going to be easy, but there's only one person who can actually do that for you. And that's going to be a coach because that person is going to challenge your worldview, your habits, your routines, your regularities on a regular basis in order for you to be like, hmm, yeah, that thing actually isn't serving me as much as I think mm. that it is. And, you know, it is a um, it's a hard process to go from that, you know, it's not we talk about the hard hard things is it can be a harder and uncomfortable transition to move and realise that this is how I've been working, this is how I've been looking at things, but there's a wider scope in a different way. And I'm, you know, We've discussed it on many occasions, clearly on my calls, that, you know, I'm very much in that entrepreneur space and, like, give me something to do and let me know what the parameters are and I'm a happy little chicken and I'll run off and I will either exceed those or, you know, yeah. get it done. Yeah. That's that's what I do. Um, but l- learning to frame things in that and see the potential of beyond the four walls of the affiliate and beyond my four internal walls was a huge reframe for me. And that's what, when I could actually see the point of, or get to the point of going transitioning out of the affiliate, because before that it was like, well, this is what I do. Mm -hmm. Here's, here's my stick in the ground, my sword on the hill. This is where I'm going to die. I built this thing and now this is it till I die. And (laughs) this is who I am. Damn it. Yeah. Well, it was, that was, that was very much attached to identity. And, you know, we've talked about trauma and all of those things on endlessly. Um, but I, you know, that was an important awakening where you could see beyond, you mm. know, what's beyond the the shadows in the distance. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the funny thing about looking for help, right. Is that, um, the solutions that you seek are based largely and solely on the worldview you keep, mm. right? And what's particularly interesting about that is that the worldview that you keep, by most accounts, doesn't seem to be that serving to you, right? And so, 
potentially maybe the answer is that I need to look for a solution that's outside the conceivable solution, right? Like, AKA I need to think differently about the help that's out there for me. Mm. And that was really what we sought to achieve when we built Fitfilia was just, you know, an unconventional approach to a conventional problem. And that's really, I think what we have created in many ways is that there's no shortage of conventional help to your conventional problem, right? Like the conventional problem is that affiliates are struggling, right? Um, you know, because all businesses are struggling. Frey is about mm. the grasshopper right now. Um, this is hilarious. That's the new pup pup. No, she's the old pup pup. Oh. You see her over there? Oh, yeah. Hello, pup pup. Frey, you're on the podcast. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of conventional solutions to the conventional problem, which is the affiliate, all small businesses, mm. right? But like particularly in this situation, the affiliate. And so there's no shortage of help out there, which is like, hey, just do this. It will solve your mm. problem. As a conventional approach to a conventional problem. And it may, in fact, work in many, many situations. That's just not something that we were ever interested in. We were interested in an unconventional approach to a conventional problem, which was essentially to not come in with a solution at all, but instead better understand each individual problem and then work individually on those problems, which is essentially the, the essence of becoming a coach or being a coach. Um, you know, so when I say that the solutions you seek are in relation to the, the worldview that you keep, it's that most of us, even myself, um, we tend to make future decisions based on past outcomes, mm. right? And if that's the case, then we, you know, we have to really consider that like, has what I've done in the past worked? Therefore, should I be making decisions based on that past as it applies to the future, mm. which I'm trying to change? More often than not, that answer is probably not the right answer, mm. right? And so if it comes time to go searching for help. You have to ask yourself like, am I in some way, shape or form replicating a past uh an effective or you know mm. problematic outcome and you'd be surprised that trauma be doing those trauma things and you'd be like oh damn it i did it again it just was a different shape color or size mm. and it's you know we've all had conversations where you know something will come up about well what have you done to fix this or you know to to improve this situation so you list off all the things that you've done go yeah none of them worked well why didn't they work oh well i can't try that again because i've already done that yeah. what if you could do it better or differently and then it's like oh and there's so many like i see the posts in the various affiliate owner groups where you know they're crowdfunding you know um sympathy and permission to 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 um, fail, like I, I've tried the things over and over and they don't work. So, what do I do? Like, and they, you know, they're um, trying to find solutions to to problems that they actually deeply internally know the answer to, but don't want to go there and don't want to be told that. Hmm. I mean, yeah, we specialize in the people who've tried it all, right? Like, mm -hmm. that's really what it comes down to. Our specialty is not in the people who have not sought help before. In fact, more often than not, that genuinely is the one that is the hardest for us because, you know, when you do show up, having never tried any other solution, like you just want answers. You're like, can you just tell me what to do? And as a coach, we're like, nope, nope, because it's not about that, right? Like, because my past outcomes say nothing about your future outcomes. Uh, I can help you avoid some problems that are very obvious, but aside from that, no, the answer is no. And mm. that's one of the reasons why we are very successful in those situations where people are just like, I fucking tried everything. And those people are genuinely usually have abandoned hope. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, they were not interested in conventional solutions to a conventional problem. They were likely entrepreneurially minded. And then they saw entrepreneurial solutions, AKA tasks, obsession, um, and, mm. and solutions, things like that. And so they find themselves being like, all this stuff seems great and all nothing wrong with any of the content that you're teaching me, telling me or speaking at me. But like, if this goes right, I don't want anything to do with it. Right. Like, and then instantly they're just like, eh, right. And so that's the first part. The second part is that, um, most people, and this is the hard part. Most people who think that they want help don't want help at all. They want out. 
in a lot yeah. of different ways. You see this a lot inside the gym with, you know, nutrition clients or people who are in pain physically or otherwise, like they want to come, they want to pay somebody money. So that person can give them advice so that that advice is wrong. And therefore it's that person's fault that it didn't work for them, not them. And you see this all the time in nutrition. I tried to do what you said you did. It didn't work for me, knowing full well that they never once hit any of those macros or any of those calories. And they're like, I gained weight on what you told me to do. I'm like, you gained weight because you did everything I told you to do, plus what you used to do. <laughs> like, you can't have both, right? And and so you see this a lot. And for us, you know, one of the reasons why our model eats people like that up and spits them out is that we don't give them any places to hide any of their incessant need for distraction, right? Like people come to oh. us, they're like, you know, can you give me the checklist on how to, to, to create a, uh, bring a friend week, right? Like, yeah, I could, but like when it doesn't produce, you're going to be like, your bring a friend week doesn't work for me. Even though there's a hundred people who it did work for, right? Like it doesn't yeah. matter. And the reason is, is that they want it to not be their fault. And when you are yeah. an entrepreneur who finds yourself in an entrepreneur spot, that position is incredibly, incredibly heavy because there yeah. is no path right? There is no checklist. There is no just, you know, what do I do next? The answer uh -huh. is left foot. Then the next answer is right foot. The next answer is left uh -huh. foot, right? Until you eventually find yourself wherever you try to get to. To an entrepreneur, that's not what they want. They want to see, you know, how many steps it is to the next left turn, then to the next right turn, then how many steps up so they can make an educated decision that like, yeah, I don't want to do that trail, uh -huh. right? Here's the problem with that very statement. And it was today's post. The, yeah, I don't want to do that trail because they've got all the information the entrepreneur did. They made a decision about their ability to achieve the outcome of that trail based on their knowledge and their past outcomes. Oh, I've mm. tried to hike a mountain like that before. It didn't work for me. Thank you for telling me all the steps. I'm going to head out. Right? Like, mm. But if you were a coach, you'd be like, why don't we just take a step? Mm. Let's take another one. Let's take another one. And then another mm. one. Right. And then eventually they're like, I'm tired. Are you tired? Yeah, I'm tired. Well, what's your heart rate? Well, it's like 145. So you're not that tired, right? Like, mm. You're bored. I get it. Let's talk about something, right? Mm. We start talking about something, we make it to the right turn, right? Same thing happens, right? Next thing you know, you've gotten to the top of the mountain. You would have not gotten to the top of that mountain if I had given you all the answers. You would have made a decision oh. on what you were able to do and what you were capable of. And you would have made that decision based on past outcomes and you would have limited future experiences. You see this all the time. And this is what happens over the course of like a diesel day or big fish. That's why it's so part and parcel to what we believe in here is that like the amount of people who will never engage in something like a diesel day because they're like, I could never do 24 hours. I'm telling you right now, you could. Everybody that's listening to this absolutely could. You're just full of your own shit. Mm. And that's not really your fault. It's not like you're like a bad person. It's just that your mind's mind, to quote Tosh, will tell you nasty nasty things about yourself mm. based on what you failed at before and really you failed at them before is that you just weren't in a favorable situation scenario or environment right like you'd be surprised what you can get through over the course of 24 hours when you have somebody like tosh telling you that you're okay and that they believe mm. in you right and that's why everybody gets through it diesel day is literally nothing more than just love for 24 hours but it's shrouded in this arduous physical endeavor that doesn't afford most people to even take the first step Mm. And it's, you know, they people think when they first get to Diesel Days, it's about the doing and it's about the thing. And then, you know, very quickly into it, they're like, it's not about the 24 hours of moving at all. Yeah. Well, That's, I mean, be very clear. It is about the doing. You're going to do this. You're going to yeah, do You've got to do, do it. it. <laughs> but, and it's, you're going to be doing, you're going to do more than you could mm. ever possibly have ever imagined you could do. And mm. for a lot of people, they're not interested in that. And that's okay. Mm. It doesn't make you a bad person. It just doesn't make you my person. Mm. Like I'm interested in the people who I can help see their potential, who know that there's something more there that they can get and give than they're possibly believing in themselves. And that's where a coach comes in. That's where Fit Philly comes in. That's where we come in. The people who are particularly interested in checklists, like we've got them, we could give them to you, you know, and I'd be more than happy to give them to you and then watch you fail at them and then explore why you failed at them. If that's what you're interested in. So like we have those solutions. It's just not the product that we put forward. The product we put forward is coaching. It's us. It's the remote CEO yeah. program. It's us coming in and proposing solutions, watching the team falter at those solutions and saying, what's the struggle for you here? Right. And then removing those yeah. struggles. 
And I think that that's important. And as it applies to when you go, go seeking help, like I think all help is a good thing, right? I think the single biggest failure that humans in general make in any area of their life is that, and myself included, they don't know how to ask for help. Huh. Truly. And that's important because there's, there's only one way forward in any area of your life, whether it be business, whether it be relationships, whether it be, you know, fitness, you're going to have to ask for help. Mm. And with it comes that vulnerability of having to say, I feel like I'm the person riding the line, so I should have all the answers on how best to ride this line, but I actually don't. Yeah. And then do I therefore, who am I to ride this line if I, don't have all the answers and have to say little help over here. And we then, you know, run it through our filter of our trauma and our experiences of feeling then like a failure mm -hmm. and getting past, you know, that stuff is quite often the first, you know, the, the big stuff that we can unpack, you know, early on with clients is getting past that, that, you know, getting them comfortable in that space of, it's okay, you know, I know it's something that's bandied around around mental health. It's not. It's okay to not be okay. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people say that, but I don't think they actually genuinely absorb the, the power of that statement. Well, without getting into the backstory about how we all come to have this disassociated relationship with, with help, you know, and, mm. and it's, it's just institutional, right? I mean, mm. from the very nature of, of, you know, what it was like in school, you know, how you know, it was, Mm -hmm. weird to raise your hand or you know and it was mm -hmm. bad if you needed extra help you know and you had to stay after mm -hmm. class like so like if you weren't able to learn what the teacher taught you the way that they taught it to you then there was something wrong with you right like and mm -hmm. that's just and you learn that for 12 plus years of your life you know depending on how far you make it in, in the quote-unquote education world and you come out the backside. i don't know anybody i mean there's maybe a couple but like i don't really particularly know anybody who came out of any degree of school with belief in themselves. Mm. You know, they came out of school with like things to back them up, degrees or otherwise, but like the oh. general nature of that whole institution is like to get you to kind of doubt yourself. And that's a that's a complete sidebar tangent rant. And I'm sorry that I just took us down there, but <laughs> that's how I feel about it. Um, you know, the, the very nature though of of why people don't want to ask for help is it's it's sort of rooted in vulnerability. People don't really want to be that vulnerable. You know, for one, we were conditioned to you know vulnerability is bad, and that's not that unreasonable if you think about like being vulnerable would get you eaten by a saber toothed tiger many years ago. But like the world around us and the environment has completely changed, and it's changing at such a rapid rate, it's impossible for you to live in that yeah. tribal mentality where you're like the way I was raised is going to support me in future endeavors. Because like at this point the experiences of your parents who raised you are, they might as well be 300 years ago, right? Like, mm. uh, what's happened in the last week is essentially eclipsed the amount of evolution technologically in the entirety of the eighties. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. you know, <laughs> and, and that's, it's comical, but it's almost probably true, right? The, the advancement of machine learning in just a singular yes. week probably eclipses the entire decade of the eighties and nineties. Mm. Uh, and so, when it comes time to ask for help, people just don't really want to do it because there's a lot of vulnerability into it. But the other side of it is that um, we don't really know what help is, right? You don't really know mm -hmm. what kind of help is out there. And the main reason for that is that one, you've never asked for it. And two, you know, you've never really, you've never really experienced true help. You tend to mm -hmm. go looking for things that will help you without vulnerability. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we're like, I need, I am in pain. I know I need help. I'm going to get help but I'm going to find the best help I can get without being vulnerable. And here's how mm. I know this is true. The reason why we have such a high client success rate is that we screen all of our candidates to make sure they're a good fit. And the way that we mm. screen those candidates is that we tell them one thing, we're going to diagnose their company. Mm. The, the amount of people who literally pack their shit and run for the hills at the idea that like they're going to be seen is mm. astronomical right like i would say the vast majority of people who come in are like that seems like exactly what i need but it has nothing to do with what i want because i do not want you to see just how bad i am 
how bad my mm. business is, how terrible things actually are. I would much prefer you to let me just download some stuff, hop into a group call, you know, watch some modules on my own, pick and choose what I want to use that's comfortable to me, put it into practice. If it doesn't work, then it's your fault, not mine. Maybe you can be my money back because your solution didn't work, right? Like never once did those people have to get vulnerable and be like, yeah, so what am I doing wrong, right? Like, mm. and those people aren't our people. There's mm. a lot of places out there for those people. Um, the people who are like, I like what I do. I'm just not sure it's working. Can you take a look at what I'm doing and help me get better mm. at it? You're our people, right? But there's yeah. a reason why we're the only people who do that legitimately. And we do that on purpose to screen out the vast majority of those people. Yeah. I mean, you know, I remember going through that process and going, well, don't I just feel like a bag of, you know, shit trying to fill out this document and going, I don't even know the answers to some of these questions and I feel like I should by now. And it was a really um, confronting process, but I would got to the point where I'm like, well, you've tried everything else, now you're going to try something different. Hmm. So just hit submit and away you go. Like just see like i felt you know good about the conversation and and good about you know what we talked about i'm like this is different you made me feel different so let's just do different and just be open to the process um and ironically if this is the stuff that we as affiliate owners struggle with in our business if we can recognize this struggle that we have it opens a massive doorway for us to understand our clients are doing exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like they are coming to you going, yep, I just want to lose five pounds, you know, just want to feel a little bit better. But if you can get to that space where you can diagnose their, what they really need, come up with a plan together and ask them, well, why has what you've been doing in the past not worked and get into that vulnerable space. It's not about the five pounds. Mm. It's about, you know, their self-worth and their feelings and all of that sort of stuff. So then when it comes time that they want to leave because it's got hard or they're whatever, it's like, hey, you can have a far better conversation on the back end of, you know, this is what we're working on. This is why we're doing it. This is what, you know, you you we agreed that you felt like you needed. Mm. And why are you shying away from the flame now? Sure. Because I'm your coach and if I let you quit on you, then I've, you know, I've failed both of us Yeah, and have much more powerful conversations. But we need to be open to the process for ourselves so that we can open that, that, that door with our clients and have way more rewarding interactions with our clients and our staff and make everything a lot better. Um, well, first of all, the diagnostic process wasn't that bad. You made it sound like you got a root canal in public. <laughs> like, pants off or something. No, that's what the podcast is for. <laughs> yeah. um, that's what we're here for is to call Lisa back over the coals again. You know, yeah. the, the process th through which we do it is not meant to be, you know, you know, invasive, insulting or anything of that nature. It's just, it's mm. mo meant to do one thing more than anything else. And that is create awareness, right? Because like, mm. awareness precedes action. And, you know, until you guys become aware of uniquely where you're falling short, you don't really know where to put your attention or energy into. Mm. And, you know, so that's the reason it was built that way. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, there's there's no shortage of, of answers that are out there. And, and if you want the secret to the test, like just become a fit affiliate client because the whole model, to Lisa's point, was built to be stolen and iterated. Right? Like mm. if you want the answers on how to run the gym and you want to just take the checklist, become a client and from day one conversation one to you know conversation 200 just iterate them all for your clients it was literally built to be that exact same way you know and but that's if you want the answers you can also take mm -hmm. all those things along the way and iterate and, and really kind of continue to evolve them and make them into your own thing and that's really what i certainly suggest that you do mm -hmm. but as it applies to getting vulnerable for people, it's it's not so much about, it's no different really than coming to class, right? Like think about the value of which you have experienced inside doing CrossFit, right? The, the sheer nature, the reason most people will be on the outside talk shit about CrossFit pull-ups and all these other things is that like all the things that they have done up until this point 
have still not afforded them the ability to do well in that environment, right? Like they can go in and back and buy chest tries, hour of cardio until they're blue in the face. You expose them to one workout and they're in the corner throwing up for the next 30 minutes. That is really, really exposing, right? They're going to uh-huh. be on the outside and they're going to throw stones at it. The stupid, dangerous, this, that, like, no, it's not dangerous. What's dangerous is never changing the way you see the world. Uh-huh period. Right. And that applies to fitness and as well as anything else. And so, you know, but in CrossFit, the reason why it's so successful is every day is an assessment. Every day is a measurement of how you stack up to your peers in the same sort of objective quantifiable metrics of fitness. And that's what keeps us all coming back. That's what keeps us all listening to our coach. That's what keeps us in pursuit of such greatness in fitness. And that's why so many people have achieved entrepreneur, entrepreneur, growth or fix, whatever you want to call it, they can still achieve in the same environment. And so while entrepreneur, entrepreneur, growth versus fix seems to typecast people and seems to like define them, you know, for or against the future, it doesn't. It just means that you need to know who you are to know how you're going to pursue the future. And that really just means to understand your worldview and how you see the world uniquely so that you can better understand why you need to evolve that because all things in life must grow. And that includes the way you see the world. And I, th- I think, you know, a large part of that and the beauty of coaching is, you know, when we talk about that vulnerability piece and, you know, to flick back, I guess, on, you know, when we talked or when I talked about like my diagnostic experience, the thing that made it okay to feel like I didn't know the things I should know is that, you as my coach said, we get it. You don't know. And that's okay. We're Mm going to work on this together. And it was okay to be able to, to be vulnerable. So if we can do that for our clients and, and our other relationships, like I see you Mm -hmm. and to validate that and not necessarily make it okay. It's so unfair that you don't know anything. It's not your fault. CrossFit didn't give you the Bible on how to do this thing. We get it. It's like, we see you, it's okay, but we're going to work on it together. Mm. And that, that was the profound kicker for me in that, that experience was it was okay Mm -hmm. to, to, to um, admit to that. It's always okay. Mm. It's part of your journey, right? It's your story. Like it's it's page one or 300. It doesn't really matter. It's up Mm. to you when it ends. Right. And, you know, for a lot of people, unfortunately, that story ends at like the midway, but yet the book continues to go on, but they just repeat page 200 over and over and over again until it gets like, it's the same page until page 400 and then they die, right? Like, uh. That is an existence in a world in which I am completely and truly disinterested in for both myself, but for the entire world around me um, as a sort of a personal admission. Um, I have been on record multiple times saying I dislike people. Like, you know, I'm just, you know, people are like, that's interesting because you're a seminar instructor. Like you spend your time with strangers all the time. But the truth of the matter is is that I don't dislike people. The truth of the matter is that I love them, all of them, every single one of them. I can sit, you know, here and look in the woods or I can sit in, in a mall or an airport and I can see all these people who are living their own journey. Right. And one of the things that always broke my heart the most and things that used to just drive me crazy is that like people just don't believe in themselves. Right. And so Mm -hmm. for the longest time, I didn't really even understand what it was that was frustrating me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's essentially that my whole life, I've always believed in people more than they believed in themselves. Um, Mainly because I had to, I was born without much. So I had no choice, but to believe that there was hope because the other reality was accepting it for what it is. And that would have been a reality that would be very different than me sitting in the mountains right now and being as, you know, relatively successful as I have become. And that was because I believed in other people, not in myself, right? Like I believed in the greater opportunity and ability and capability of others around me and that they could help me in my journey. And so I've told people, you know, my whole life really, you know, when they ask what you do and I just jokingly would always say either A, I'm retired if I didn't really care about the conversation or B, I collect people. And it's uh-huh. truly all I do. Like I collect people and people that I believe in because I do genuinely believe in every single person's ability to solve their own problems. And the reason that's so frustrating to me and was for so long was that I found myself, you know, engaged in conversations that I was truly disinterested in because most people don't really want to have uncomfortable, deep and, 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 you know, 
prophetic or impactful conversations. They want to have dismissive or, you know, avoidant conversations where they want to talk about how it's somebody else's fault or this or that. Yeah. Those things always bothered me. Not because I don't think their boss is an asshole. He's probably a giant ass face for the same reason that you're being an ass face because you're saying that he's the problem, but you're the problem yeah. because you're allowing it. And I always found myself stuck somewhere between being a shy introvert and wanting to literally slap people in the face and be like, it's you stupid. You're the constant in the problem. And not to be as bold as that, but like that was always a central thing to be like, I can't stand people. And what I was saying was that like, how do they not see it? Mm. How can they not see what is so obvious to me? And then you spend enough time around other people and you're like, Oh, cause it's not obvious to most people. Mm. Like, you know, as a, as a career, I read people for a living. Right. And, and I don't do that judgmentally. I don't do that to, you know, to accuse or, or, perjure people it's just simply that like i genuinely am always curious in everybody from the fucking elevator operator to the gas station attendant to the ceo like i'm curious what you did that got you to think that like this was it what did mm. you accept what did you allow what did you what did you what did you accept as truth and let that make all of your future decisions so that you became the homeless guy mm. right and like, you've probably heard me say on this podcast before that the what people see when they see success is what people have accomplished. What I see in all people is what they've settled for, right? Like, because the difference between the homeless man and the billionaire is simply all they are is a demonstration of what they've accepted as ter as their capability and their limit, right? Like, because even the billionaire could be a multiple billionaire, right? And he could keep mm. going. But at some point, even he's like tapping, right? I'm out. Like, this is enough work. I've got enough. And like, that happens for some people at a much lower level and a much higher level. And I think the only thing that needs to happen is someone has to believe in them. Mm. And what a perfect note, I think, to stick a bow on this uh, one. We did unpack a lot of things today um, and given people a lot of uh, food for thought. Um, I encourage you, if this has resonated you, please resonated with you, not resonate you, resonated with you, like, subscribe. Give us a comment. Let us know your thoughts. Um, there are links in the show notes to connect with us if you want to talk on this topic further. And in a blatant plug, in coming weeks, we do have some awesome guests coming up on the podcast. So it's kind of a stay tuned. We have the Starrettes coming to talk about Born to Move, which is very exciting. Um, and as you've said, Mr. Brian Shontosh will be back for, I think he'll be our first three-peat guest, which will be exciting. Um, and we've got a few others coming down the pipeline, which are very exciting. So stay tuned and, you know, um, follow along because we're not afraid to have the big conversations. I mean, you guys almost got me to cry on this podcast. So there you got that going for you. Yeah. Well, that's, that's always a good day. Now we're about to go and do Michael. So it'll probably be me. <laughs> yeah. That's a, it's the downfall of choosing to love everybody and getting your heart broken every single day, but it's okay. Yeah. Still love everybody. And we love you. All right, I'll see you on the next one, good sir. Okay, bye-bye.